This website is the bbsdocumentary.com website, and I'm on a page that is particularly uh, dedicated to major BBS. And I'm, I'm really drawn to this because I used to run a major BBS-powered bulletin board system back in the day. It was a multi-line system. I, I supported multiple uh, incoming dial-up lines on a single computer, and that was one of the things that was so great about this software. And the reason that I wanted to bring it up today is because I'm kind of going off the beaten path here. Uh, it's not a programming video, but it's a, a video that's uh, really important to me because it was really one of the things that got me into programming a lot more seriously and one of the things that led me into believing that I might actually be able to make a living on this stuff. So Major BBS was what powered a bulletin board system that I ran back in the day, and this website offers a handful of... Uh, uh, related downloads. A lot of it is documentation that was related to the software, um, but you've also got um, the major BBS test drive. It is this uh, two-disc uh, install that you could install back in the day to give you a feel for the bulletin board system. It wasn't the full uh, system, and it uh, I think it expired after some time. But one of the things that they've got uh, is this uh, package here called mbbsforever.zip. It's a large download, a large comparable to the other items that they've got on this thing. It's about 125 megs, I think, around there. But it is a complete bulletin board system powered by uh, Major BBS, and it includes a handful of modules. And one of the links on this page actually shows you everything that they've got. Let me bring it up. Um, this is everything that's included in this zip file. It's Androids, it's Quest for Magic. These are games. So Kyrandia, which, by the way, is a text adventure that uh, inspired the Legend of Kyrandia uh, PC games, if you've ever played those. Um, it's kind of a true story. You can look it up. It, I don't think a lot of people know that, but it's the Kyrandia text adventure actually is what inspired the original developers to make Legend of Kyrandia. I'll find that link and see if I can include it. Um, but it's uh, So it's a variety of, uh, of add-ons for major BBS, including Tele Arena. Tele Arena was a big deal, hard to get. Um, T-Lord, Legend of the Red Dragon. Legend of the Red Dragon was a really popular uh, BBS door game back in the day, but T-Lord was Tournament Lord in that you can play online simultaneously with all the people that you've got on your bulletin board system. All the people connected can all be playing T-Lord um, at the same time. A uh, handful of things that probably look familiar, Blade Master, but Trade Wars 2002, that was another one. It was a really popular BBS door game that was ported over to the major BBS so multiple people could play online simultaneously. Uh, one of our favorites is down here, Far West Trivia. Lots and lots of hours spent in Far West Trivia. Great game. Um, but then, you know, you've got other things down here like Vercom's Major TCP. A lot of the Vercom packages are what took Major BBSs, which were eventually called World Group Systems, and put them online, put them on the internet so people could actually telnet into them, provided FTP and uh, telnet out functionality, IRC, so internet relay chat, was all uh, a possibility on bulletin board systems. Once the internet became a, 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 con a kind of a consumer-driven entity, Vercom was a key player in making that all possible on the BBS. So if you've ever come across this page before and you're kind of nostalgic for, for bulletin board systems like I am just because they, they're kind of the precursor to my programming uh, background, uh, you, you know, you'll come across this stuff and you'll see that you know, you have to run this stuff on Windows because you know you need to. It's going to try to tie into your uh, uh, internet protocol functionality on the Windows operating system, either an XP or a 2000. You can certainly do this on Windows 7, I believe, but uh, the instructions will have you uh, install some software packages and and follow some very specific directions to get the bulletin board system online and something that you can actually tell that into. And if you're not comfortable doing this stuff, it could actually uh, you know, it could read a little bit daunting and, and, and possibly even turn you off from even attempting it. And if you're feeling nostalgic like I am, you know, that can be a little bit disappointing. You may not want to go through all of these steps just so that you can get it online and get a local session going and play Trade Wars 2002 or something. So what I wanted to do in this video was just kind of walk you through the steps that I take to download mbbsforever.zip and kind of decompress it put it into a directory and emulate DOS. So I'm not going to run it in Windows. I'm on the Mac. I'm going to emulate Microsoft DOS and I'm going to bring this bulletin board system up and, and, and see if we can get it to work. I think I've done this before and I think I was successful. So I'm hoping that we can kind of recreate that here. I should have written down some of the instructions. Hopefully this won't be a video where I'm kind of stumbling. If I am, my apologies. 
but I think I've got a process down. I've got a directory up here that's empty, uh, suggesting that I've done it before and cleared it out. So we'll try it. But what I want to do is I want to get major BBS, this package with all these modules, and I want it running on my Macintosh system. And I'm not going to support connections. I'm not going to support dial up or telnet in. I'm just going to support running the bulletin board system and being able to log in locally so that I can cruise around, play old games, and that sort of thing. So that's what I want to do. I've got a directory here where I'm going to kind of, you know, uh, plant the files once I open them. And then uh, I'll emulate DOS. We'll get everything running, and, and we'll take it from there. So I've got a pretty good idea of what to do just because I, I've done it before, and, and I, was, I was successful. So I think so long as I just follow that same path, we'll be good. Um, just a note. If you, you should be able to do this on any system. If you want to get up and running quickly, uh, you can run this on a Mac. You can run this on a Linux machine. You can run it on your Windows machine. Um, you just won't be able to do all the stuff that they're talking about in the documentation here as far as getting it online and making it something that you can tell that into. So let me show you what we're doing. So I've decompressed the MBBS Forever file. And it's got a handful of things in it. Among them is the bbsv6.zip directory, which you have to decompress. That gives you the bbsv6 directory. I'm going to take that. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to copy this out of here. And I'm just going to go ahead and put it into a directory that I know that I'm going to set aside for it. I'll paste it here. That puts it into place. There's a lot to, there's a lot to copy over, evidently. There's a lot of stuff there. It's a lot of modules. And, and we're actually going to not use all of them. And I'll show you why. Uh, so I'll close that out. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and open DOSBox. I'll, send, I'll, I'll include a link to DOSBox in the video description here. This is definitely key. This is going to allow you to emulate Microsoft DOS on whatever machine you're on. It works on uh, Mac OS like you see in front of you. It's going to work on your current Windows machines. It's going to work on Linux. So DOSBox is key. You must have DOSBox. I'll go ahead and I'll open this up. So that's open. So what you're looking at right now is DOSBox. Uh, nice little tiny window. So it's emulating DOS as it used to be. So our resolution is awfully small. First thing you'll notice is when you open up DOSBox, you start out at a Z prompt. Uh, we want to do our work on the C prompt. Uh, C is not going to exist. I have to mount it first. You can mount your C drive to any directory that exists on your system here. So the, the drive that I just copied that BBSV6 directory over to is going to serve as our C drive. I just can't remember how to do it. Um, let's see. It says that we can type intro mount to give us somewhat of a hint. And that's perfect. That's just what we need. So what we're going to do is we're going to mount the C drive. But we're going to mount it to the directory that I set up specifically for this, which I actually called bbsv6, all in lowercase. And then the, the uppercase bbsv6 is what I copied over. So when I do that, I should be able to go to my C drive, and I should see just the bbsv6 in all caps, which I do. So I see bbsv6, and that's where I want to go. I'll go over to that directory, and now I'm there. So when I do a directory listing, I've got, it's super fast, but I've got everything there that's related to uh, the bulletin board system. And I'll just do this really quick just so you can see. And some of these might look familiar to you if you've ever run a major BBS before in the past. You'll see a handful of the batch files, just bbs.bat, which you use to kick off the bulletin board system and get it running. So if you've ever worked with any of this Galacticom stuff, major BBS or world group, then you're seeing this and you're thinking, whoa, I've seen this stuff before. Oh man, yeah, far west. There's the far west uh, third-party developer file prefix there. All the GAL stuff is all Galacticom. Yeah, this is all familiar. It's really cool stuff. I haven't looked at it in a while. So you're now on the C drive in the BBS v6 directory here. So what we're going to do is we're going to fire it up. Uh, actually, there's something that we have to do first. Here, here's what prevents this from actually working initially out of the box. If you've got all of the Vercom related modules installed, it's going to give you an error right away because it's not going to be configured properly. It's going to put a handful of things in your configuration. And we'll just bring this up so you can see it. So here's the major BBS. Uh, you've got, you're going to have a handful of things in your hardware uh, configuration that are related to uh, TCP IP protocol routing and that sort of thing, which are going to be completely irrelevant to getting this thing online and up and running quick. 
So you have to disable those. And I found that the fastest way to do that is to actually go back to your DOS prompt and look for all of the modules that start with the TCP prefix. And these are these are those. And these are all of the Vercom modules. In our particular case, we're not going to use any of these. We don't need the, the FTP module add-on. We don't need any of the, the IRC stuff. Uh, we don't need anything that's going to be related to you know, pulling POP3 mail from uh, you know, SMTP servers. We don't, we're not going to use any of this stuff. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and we're going to delete anything that's got the TCP uh, prefix on it. TCP was Vercom's uh, three-letter uh, third-party developer prefix. And we'll go ahead and delete all of those. That effectively takes them out of your bulletin board system so that when you type in BBS, which is a batch file, and that fires up your bulletin board system, it's going gonna, it's gonna to go through all of your installed modules. It's going to recognize that the, the Vercom ones that you've got in your menu tree are gone. And that's what you're looking at here. This red window says, hey, FTP, IRC client, R log, and these are all modules that are referenced in your menu tree, and they don't exist anymore. We have to take those out. So let me walk you through what you need to do to do that. So we'll acknowledge that. It's going to rebuild our BBS user documentation. And then when that's done, we're going to select number two. That's going to take us into the menu tree. And what we want to do is we want to look for those three modules. And this is a this is a pretty scattered looking menu tree, but we should find it. So like right away I see IRC and FTP here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and hit F6 to delete that. I know that I don't want IRC. I don't want FTP. So I'll delete that. Oops, it's not working. But I do. I want F7. No? Oh, I don't. Sorry, I want F6. Yes, delete. OK, so that's gone. And then let me find the R login. It's something weird. Oh, that's it. This is R login for some reason. They've called the page LUN. I'm not sure what that means. But that's the one. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to delete that. Boom. Damn it. I keep doing F7. F6 deletes it. We'll say yes, and we're good. So when I come out of there, it's going to rebuild everything, and it should be, it should be good. Oh, it's not going to rebuild anything. Yeah, I'm just messing with my design. I'm with my menu tree design, so that I should be good to go. And I think I am. So in that case, I should be able to fire up the BBS. And the way to do that is to press 5. Uh, you'll see if you're a major BBS operator, if you used to be a system operator at all, or a sysop, if you've, if, if you've not seen this in a long time, you may, you may cry a little bit. You know, Go ahead and grab a tissue. I'm going to go ahead and press 5 now. Here it goes. Whenever you saw that Farlap DOS extender, you knew that you were in pretty good shape. It's loading all the modules now. It's going to go a lot quicker than you're probably used to. You see the auto trail kind of building up and notifying you that things are okay. It's going, it's going. And you'll see a handful of things are registered to different user counts and stuff as the audit trail loads. And, and I don't know exactly the nature of all the things that they put together here and where they got them. It's almost certainly not legitimate. I think a lot of it has been reverse engineered and cracked, and I think that they justify it by saying it's all abandonware. I don't know if that's true or not, really. Um, I don't. I think Telearena is actually owned by somebody. I, I'm pretty sure that Major Mud is, too. So there's not enough memory to continue. I need to either reduce my memory requirements or I need to install more memory and try again. That I was not expecting. All right, so what did we do? All right, let me go into, I don't think I need to go into hardware setup, but let's do it. Since we had that problem, we definitely need to configure something. Um, all right. Oh, right, Telnet. So it's probably complaining about Telnet. I left the channel group number one of Telnet in. I'm going to change that to none. So if you're following with me, you definitely want to do that. We don't want to see Telnet. I'll keep going through here and make sure that we got everything covered. I want to make sure I've got all of my hardware considerations accounted for. We're running in DOS. We are not running in Windows or anything else. So that's something else that we need to actually make sure that we go through and account for as we're going through our hardware setup here. Uh, we're not going to activate CRT support. Uh, I don't think I need to worry about GP errors and how we handle those. I'll skip over that. This is the uh, input-output base address for local sessions. I'm not 100% sure that I need to change this. I do remember having a, a problem with local sessions before. I might have that problem again. We'll see. I don't remember. But for now, I'll just leave that as it is. Um, 
I don't think I need to worry about, worry about this. The system polling rate, I'll leave it auto and hopefully that's okay. Actually, I don't think I want to gamble. I'm going to change that to 19200. Need to run BBS under Windows. That's good. I looked at this. We're going to say no to that. Software accelerator routine be activated. I'll just leave that at yes by default, and I think that's going to cover me. So I'm going to, I've, I've made those changes. You'll definitely want to make those changes as well. We'll hit F10 to save. It's going to rebuild, and then when it's done rebuilding, we'll try it again. We'll see if it works this time. Those were definitely significant changes that we made. So you'll definitely want to make those if you're going to do what I'm doing, which is emulated in DOS, not worry about any sort of connections at all. You just want to be able to support a local connection. You'll want to do those as well. So I've pressed 5, and it's rebuilding again. This will go super quick, and then it'll come back up. Farlap DOS extender. Oh, recovery. Shoot. This may be a problem for me because I, I got all the way online and then crashed, so Major Mud is going to rebuild. This may take a bit, so I'll see if we can edit this out and make this a little bit faster. All right, we're back up and running. Major Monday did a little rebuild. I'm hoping that that was all it took to, to get us back online. We'll see. Auto Trail's loading again. Yeah, as you're watching the Auto Trail, you'll see, I don't know if you recognize this last time, it's going to throw all the reg codes in there. It's going to show you how many you know users are, are eligible to play a variety of games. Uh, T-Lord 1.26. Yeah, so far so good. I think Tele Arena is the last big thing that needs to load. And if we can get past the Tele Arena load, I think we're usually in pretty good shape. So if you're looking here at the system variables, you see I have four active accounts. Calls to date is zero. I don't have much going on in the way of total mail or forum activity. So let's see, are we done? Are we good to go? I think we're good. I think we're online. My system load is a measly 4%, which is good. My hard drive room is 259 or 249 megs. That's funny. Not much memory available to me. So I should be able to log in. So if you recall it off, you've been running a if you've ever run a major BBS system before, to log into the local session, you just simply hit F7. And that I think is where I was having a problem. Yeah, and I'm still having a problem. So when I hit F7, when I'm emulating a DOS system and I'm running major BBS, I get this black screen. I don't get anything. So what I've been doing on that is I hit escape and then I go to the um, emulation tab by hitting alt E and then just it's the only channel I have is my local session and by emulating it for whatever reason it, it actually does come up. So I'll hit escape to go into full screen mode and I'll log in as my username which is sysop and my password is sysop. Don't hack me. And I'll log right in. So this is all going to look very familiar to you if you've either been a member of a bulletin board system or if you ran a bulletin board system you got all the stuff that comes in here and logs at, at load time and that's it this is my main menu so I'm gonna conclude here but what you've got is you've got a fully working bulletin board system so long as you've only so long as you only care about the local session and that's all I want to do I just want to come in here I want to see some of my old games I want to go into the game menu that they've got set up and I want to see trade wars for example trade wars loads up so this is a, a really cool way if you've uh, been a fan of the major BBS platform for a while, if you were a user back in the day, if you ran your system, this is a really great way to get back in and, and see some of these old games. So I'm actually going to end the video there, but what I want to do is create another video where I kind of go through this bulletin board system and, and kind of reminisce about some of the system operating menus and uh, a lot of the old uh, modules that used to be so popular back in the day. It was really a lot of fun. It was good stuff. And sort of a memory lane sort of thing. So hopefully you're cool with me kind of straying off the beaten path and doing something like this. I'll dedicate just two videos to this, but it was really fun, really important to me, just because this is really what got me into programming seriously uh, when I was kind of right out of high school. Anyway, that's going to do it. I'll see you next time with a little bit more on this topic, and we'll get back to uh, programming real soon. Thanks for watching. If you like what you see, if you'd like to see more, please like this video. And of course, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks. I'll see you guys again real soon.